exciting. Guys, thanks so much.
All right, Adam Feldman, drums, uh, OG on bass, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, it's Kim on Desert TV. I'm here tonight with Black Rabbit George. Welcome to Desert TV, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy. I have uh, the three members of Black Rabbit George. You perform together and you perform beautifully. I've got OJ over here, Paul, and of course, Adam, who's on the kit. And uh, we're really excited to have you here at Mo's Desert Clubhouse tonight and uh, see you launch your new album. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to uh, with this new album? Uh, yeah, I've just, uh, well, I built a little studio up on the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, and a bit locked myself away in there with um, some tracks. Particularly, I, I recorded um, Adam on drums. We got a whole little, you know, just all the, the tracks down on that, and I sat down and started stitching bits together. And how do you feel the final outcome has been for you guys? Uh, yeah, I really like it. Like, I really struggled for a while, for a couple of years, really, of like what sort of sound I wanted to make, uh, what felt like me. So. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle and then when it came, it, it came really easy. So when I listen back to it, I'm, I like it at the moment, which is, uh, which is rare for me. Usually by the time I finished it, I'm over it. Tell me, um, what uh, does uh, Black Rabbit George feel like? You said you, you feel, it feels like you. What does uh, Black Rabbit George feel like? Soft and fluffy or are we talking like, you know, what are we, what are we talking about? I reckon like? French countryside, cheap wine. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, I, I spent some time, you know. Um, How cheap are we talking, just quickly? Well, where I used to live in France was like, um, we used to get a dollar. You used to go to the, um, it was like the, at the hardware shop, and they had this huge vat full of wine, and you brought your own receptacle or whatever. 
And uh, so I get like two, I think I was getting two to four litres a day of it or something. <laughs> and, uh, and it was one euro for, for a litre and it was good wine. And, um, and that was it. So beautiful countryside, really cheap wine. That's, that's what the music sounds like. Okay, and um, can you get uh, the equivalent of that in Australia? Is there any uh, cheap, cheap equivalent of France in Australia? I mean, we have good cheap wine, you know, WA, nothing that cheap that's good that I drink every day. But I mean, now and then if you get, you know, clean skins, you can get it, you can get the odd cheap wine. Um, so tell me a little bit more about the band. Where did you guys begin and how have you come together as the three musicians that you are today? Do you want to answer that? I don't know. It's like... Yeah, yeah, it is putting me on the spot. But, um, wow, where to start? Uh, Tijuana Cartel. That's where Polly and I kind of met. Can you tell us a little bit about Tijuana Cartel? Yeah, Just they're quickly, amazing. Don't I don't know if you've seen them. I have <laughs> seen them multiple times. Big fan. Uh, yes, I was a big fan for a long time. Um, and then Paul and I met in Bali when I was living over there. And we started playing together. I came over to Byron the following summer to have our first child. And we started recording at that point. That was 2014. And then, yeah, we... I did a bit of touring to Tijuana Cartel after that, and then Black Rabbit George sort of blossomed out of that whole thing. And then we were lucky enough to get OJ on board a couple of years ago, which has transformed the sound again. And it's, um, yeah, we're pretty happy with how it's evolved. It's very different. The, our first set has like songs from all of those years, and it's, yeah, it's very eclectic mix. So OJ, you're the last member to come on board of this beautiful little trio. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about why you've come on board and, and tell me what your uh, emotion is, I guess, towards Black Rabbit George and your connection here? Um, I think they just needed a tour buddy to start. <laughs> just a mate to hang out with. <laughs> Someone to sit in the back of the van. And <laughs> um, oh, it's been an epic, epic journey. I love playing um, Paul's music and yeah, every gig it just seems to blossom and move into something else, you know, the, the tunes. The different albums have really uh, changed a lot too and I'm excited to bring some different elements and synths and things which have come from the album. So yeah, for me it's just trying to emulate what he's recorded and uh, yeah, it's an epic little journey. I'm loving it. And speaking of journeys and adventure and uh, tours, there hasn't been much of it going on lately but can you tell us a little bit about touring life for Black Rabbit George? I know that you've toured to Asia before as well but is there any... Um, any uh, hot tips that you give any artists that are out there that are thinking about hitting the road, any, you know, crucial elements that they need to be aware of before they hit the road? I had ideas for this before, but now I forget what they were. But I don't know, one thing is like bring good food. I think that's probably pretty important, like have some nice bread backstage. Like when we tour Europe, they often have like, you have really basic things like nice auto, some cheese and like some kind of meat or something, which you guys have for us. But I reckon it's essential because there's nothing worse than like backstage and a whole band, everybody's hungry and they're kind of aggro a little bit because of just been driving for 10 hours and then everyone just gets super drunk. So the idea is that the bread kind of <laughs> <laughs> somehow balances that whole thing up. So I don't know, touring can be pretty hard in that sense, you know, like often you get to sleep at 3, 4 a.m. and then you have to be up at like 8 a.m. or something to get to a plane or, or drive somewhere. So it can be pretty hellish. So I think those little creature comforts, like bring a pillow, bring have some good podcasts so that kind of just those little things make it fun mouthwash <laughs> that's yeah. all you need mouthwash don't forget mouthwash I always end up with ulcers mouthwash is a good idea because like after a few weeks <laughs> my whole mouth is just I can't speak properly I can't sing properly like it's you know Wait, is that from too much cheap red wine in France or is that uh, <laughs> yeah. what's that from no, it's kombucha <laughs> <a> problem, <yeah. laughs> no, I have a problem with kombucha but well, uh, that's a story for another day um Tonight you are going to be playing um, a lot of tracks off your new album. You're also going to be playing a song called Charles. I do hear there's a little bit of a backstory to that one. Can you tell me what, what Charles is to you? Uh, there is a little bit. I played up in, um, uh, in Arnhem Land uh, for a few weeks there, uh, but in a pub where nobody, like, like everybody hated me. <laughs> and at the time I was on a detox, so I was trying, trying to play it straight. Just hang on, hold up quickly. Why did everybody hate you? Well, it was like a pub pub. You know, like when you think typical Aussie out back pub. And I was there singing like my folk songs about, you know, love and loss and, and all this kind of stuff. And everybody was like, you know, play, um, I don't know, what, what do they want to hear? K-San. Like, play K-San, kind of like that. Gambler. Eventually, actually, somebody mentioned that because there was a lot of Aboriginals in, in the pub and a lot of them loved the Paul Kelly song from Little Things, Big Things Grow. So I went home and learned that madly. And every time the crowd would turn on me, I'd start singing that song and then the whole crowd would start singing, <laughs> singing the words to that. But anyway, I ended up befriending a, uh, a guy, Charles, and... He stayed at the hotel. I was there for a few weeks, and um, and the song was kind of about that. It was me, me trying to, trying to sort of 
be detox and sing my own songs and then just end up being in a real drunk mess with, with some new friends. Cool. Uh, so we will be hearing Charles tonight. Is there any other hot uh, tracks that we should be listening out for um, while you guys are on stage? Is there anything that really hits home or songs that you love to play that we need to be watching your facial features and expressions while, while you're performing them? Um, there's a lot of new ones. There's a few, the new... Uh, the new songs, there's a new one called Phase, I think you might like this, I don't know, there's a lot of trippy stuff. There. We kind of go from folk to flamenco to the Middle East and then we end up with um, sort of psychedelic rock, so there you go. And for everybody who is watching at home, uh, is there anything that you'd like to say to them about um, not being at the gig but actually being watching from home? Is there any, uh, you know, hot tips, cheap red wine obviously, um, but anything else that you rec would recommend to do while during your set? They're actually allowed to dance at home. They're not allowed to dance here. No, not allowed to dance at the moment. Right, so they have to all be seated at the venue where we're playing tonight. But at home, you can dance your head off. Yeah, it's uh, well, it's listening music too. Do whatever you want. You, you, you'll feel just go crazy. No one's looking at you, so enjoy. Uh, it's Kim and I'm on Desert TV. I'm here with Black Rabbit George. Thanks so much for coming in, guys. Can't wait to hear your set. Uh, here's a song about a friend of mine in the Sunshine Coast. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Right, we're going to bring it down for a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to do a kind of a solo track, but I'm going to keep the band on stage just to punish them. Uh, it's about a friend of mine, uh, Charles. Uh, Thanks so much, Chip. Yeah. Uh, we're going to try a, uh, one of our new album, uh, which you can get on Spotify as of today. So when you go home, you can uh, listen to more of us if you're not sick of it by then. This one's called uh, Bones Getting Thin.
Thanks so much, guys. We've gone through a few, uh, few style changes. We started off as folk, and then we kind of went flamenco, Middle Eastern, uh, psychedelic. And now we're going back to folk for this track. Got that uh, guitar going.
Thanks so much, guys. Hey, we're Black Rabbit George, and you're, and you're watching, watching Desert, Desert TV. TV.